with the cost of living rising faster than ever before, it may seem like no matter what we do, we are stuck in life and going nowhere. That's why in this video, I'll be sharing the top 4 finance things that you can do to not only get you on the right track, but also prepare you far ahead in life so that you can become rich one day. And with that being said, let's jump right into step number 1. Budget your finances. This may seem super basic, but this is the most important step. You see, the biggest lie social media has taught us is that in order to get ahead in life, we need to live in bigger houses, eat at fancy restaurants, and go for luxurious holidays. The truth is that if you are busy chasing all these social status, one day at the end, you will find that you have a whole lot of things to show off and not a whole lot of happiness. So instead of focusing on how you spend your money, you need to focus on how you save your money. To do this, use the 50-30-20 budgeting rule to allocate your money income. So 50% of it goes to your needs such as your house loan, groceries, food expenses, utility bills and so on. 30% goes to wants such as entertainment, shopping and travel. And the remaining 20% goes to savings. While this is not a hard rule, the fact is that the more you can save and invest, the earlier you can reach financial independence, retire early. According to an article titled The Shockingly Simple Math Behind Early Retirement, assuming you can get 5% investment return after inflation and you only withdraw 4% from your portfolio every year by just saving and investing 20% of your income, you'll be able to retire after 37 years. So let's say you are 25 years old now, you will only be able to retire at 62. But if you can just bump your savings rate up to just 30%, the number of years you have to work drops from 37 years down to 28 years. Or even better, if you can save 50% of your salary, you will only have to work for 17 years, which means it's very possible for you to save enough money and stop working in your 40s. Obviously, this is easier said than done lah. This a survey by OCBC found that almost 30% of people found it hard to stick to a budget, while a whopping 16% of people spend beyond their means to keep up with peers. So here's how you are going to do it. Open multiple bank accounts. One account for your needs, another for your wants, and the last one is for your savings. Then set up recurring transfers to automatically transfer your money to each of the accounts so that every month when your salary comes in, your finances will automatically be budgeted. But here's a pro tip. Don't just use any random accounts. Instead, use accounts that can give you high interest rates. One account that you can use is the UOB1 account, where if you can fulfill the salary crediting and credit card spend criteria, you will earn a minimum of 3.85% interest. And the more you save, the higher the interest. As a bonus, there's currently a Rising Dragon promotion by UOB1, where you can get up to $1,288 of bonus cash rewards on top of your usual bank interest. Besides that, you can also consider parking your money in money market funds. Money market funds are a type of mutual fund that invests in high quality, short-term debt instrument, cash and cash equivalents. Currently, one of the best money market funds that you can consider is the Fullerton SGD Cash Fund, which is giving around 3.89% 7-day yield. However, just take note that even though money market fund is low risk, in the end, it's still an investment, yeah? So there's still a risk of losing money by investing in money market funds. But before we continue, here's a word from today's sponsor. UOB AM Invest has just launched a new portfolio called Cash Plus Extra. Cash Plus Extra is a low-risk portfolio that aims to provide stability and capital preservation during market downturns, while providing opportunities for capital gains in up markets. The portfolio consists of 80% United SGD Fund, Class B SGD, and 20% United SGD Money Market Fund, Class B SGD as of 31st December 2023, both of which invest in high-quality, low-risk assets such as key bills, MAS bills, and investment-grade bonds. As of 31st December 2023, Cash Plus Extra has a projected yield of up to 4.1%. This portfolio has no lock-in periods, no platform fee, and no hidden charges, while letting you invest with as little as 1 SGD, making it suitable for anyone who wants to earn a higher yield on their either cash and has a recommended minimum investment horizon of 1 year. So this can be used for saving up for your wedding 1 year later or your next year's holiday trip. Right now, UOB AM Invest is running a promotion where it is currently waiving off the 0.05% advisory fee to 31st March 2024. And on top of that, if you are new to UOB AM Invest, you can sign up using my link down below and you will get to receive a $10 credit. Terms and conditions apply of course. And with that being said, let's get back to the video. Once you have automated your budgeting, the next thing to do is to automate your spending. The one thing that I still can't get over is that there's over 30% of people who will only pay the minimum sum on their credit card bills. Like, 
I really cannot. Did you know that credit cards charge a super high 27.8% interest on the amount that you owe to them? And this interest compounds daily. Yeah. So let's say you owe them $1,000. After one year, you will actually owe them $1,320.35. And the longer you owe them, the worse it compounds. So make sure to always pay off all your high interest debts. And this must always come before you even think of investing your money. Because the historical average return of the market has been around 10% annually. But by paying off your credit card bills, it will be as though you made a guaranteed 27.8% return by paying off your credit card bills. Yay, good math. I consider anything above 4.5% interest to be high interest debt. So besides your credit card bills, also make sure to top top quickly pay off your personal loans, study loan, and any along loan that you have. The easiest way to do this is again to just automate your payments. One way I like to do it is to set up gyro payments for all my expenses, such as credit card bills, insurance bills, tax bills, and so on. So that I will never miss a bill payment. Again, here's a pro tip. Don't just use any random bank account for this. The best bank account for gyro payment is the HSBC Everyday Global Account. That's because this account has an Everyday Plus Rewards program, where every month, if you can transfer in at least $2,000 and make five eligible transactions, such as spend with your HSBC card, or make gyro bill payments, or transfer funds out to a non-HSBC account, you will earn a 1% cashback on all your eligible gyro bill payments. So essentially, you are getting a 1% discount on stuff such as your credit card bills, insurance bills, and even tax bills. Once you have automated all your finances, you are now ready to invest your money. The idea behind investing is pretty simple. You are investing your money now, so that your money grows a lot faster than what the bank is normally paying you. But, but people can lose money by investing. Well, yes, but no. There are two main reasons why people lose money in investing. One, they only focus on the short term. And two, they invest in bad companies. That's it. An article called Just Keep Buying summarizes this pretty well. If you invest for just 5 years, there's a big chance that you will see negative returns on your investments. But the longer you stay invested for, the negative returns slowly disappear and you will see more and more positive returns until eventually, when you reach 20 years and beyond, you will not see any real negative returns. I won't go into the details on how to look for good companies because I've already covered it in this video. But I will say that for the vast majority of investors, the easiest way is to just buy ETFs, such as the ETF that tracks the S&P 500 index, DSPS, or the ETF that tracks all the top companies all around the world, VWRA. By investing into ETFs, you aren't just betting on one or two companies to do well. Instead, you are betting on the entire country or the entire world to do well. While past returns do not guarantee future performance, barring any black swan events such as World War III and alien invasion, I would say that we could more or less expect the same kinds of returns from them. Then, once you have found a good investment, all you need to do is to just consistently dollar cost average into it and trust the process. But also, here's a tip for you. If you find yourself constantly checking the stock prices, again, the easiest way is to just set up recurring investments where the broker will just automatically buy into your investments periodically. This will not only let you eliminate the feeling of fear and greed, but it will also help you invest during market downturns, such as during the 2020 crash and the 2022 bottom, thereby letting you buy in at some fantastic prices. But besides looking at investing in the stock market for high returns, we also need to focus on building up our safety nets so that in the event our investments fail, touch wood, at the very least, we still have something that we can fall back to. And that's where pension schemes come in. Most countries have their own pension schemes where you can contribute money to your pension account to fund your retirement. For Singapore, you have the CPF where you can top up your special account or Medisafe account to earn up to 5% interest plus a tax relief of up to $8,000 every year. And for Malaysia, you have the EPF which has a pretty good track record of paying out some impressive dividends. Plus, you will also get a tax relief of up to 7,000 ringgit on your EPF contributions. This is also known as the Kuei Lapis strategy, where at the bottom, you maximize the use of your pension schemes so that you will have a very solid foundation. Then further up, you can add on more investments such as SME 500, Nasdaq, trading, and so on, which you can use to compound your money faster. However, with that being said, all this will be pointless if you don't really have much to invest. Compounding only works best 
if you have a lot of money to compound. For example, let's say you only invest $1,000 and your investment goes up to 100%. Sure, 100% return is impressive. But guess what? You will only have a $1,000 return, which is meh versus someone who can invest $100,000. All he needs is his investment to just go up by 1% and he will already get a $1,000 return. So here's an advice. Don't worry on how to reach $1 million. Just focus on reaching $100,000 and you will eventually reach $1 million. Guess why? Let's say you invest $1,000 every month. With a 7% return, you will reach $100,000 after 7 years. And from there, you will only need 5 years to reach $200,000. Then 3 years to reach $300,000 and so on. The more money you have, the faster it can compound until you eventually reach $1 million. As Charlie Munger once said, the first $100,000 is the toughest to earn. So to reach $100,000 quickly, start working on a side hustle. The average millionaire has 7 income streams. So if you want to be rich, you need to start a side hustle. Whether it's photography, video editing, writing a blog, or even YouTube, totally up to you. With the internet, it has become a lot easier to look for side hustle nowadays. Working on a side hustle not only lets you earn more money, it also lets you gain more experience and helps to diversify your income so that you won't have to cry if ever your company lets you off. So those were the top 4 finance things that you should focus on. Hopefully, it helps you out. But what other finance things that you should do? Do comment down below and let me know. Like, share and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday.